prayers of my former clinical supervisor at the prison in California, yo. It's like at the beginning of the day, right? Before the day had even begun, he would start off by saying, what a day. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm like, you are hilarious. It'd be early in the morning, you guys, at the start of the shift. He's like, what a day. So I died. Hey, yo, it's crazy. Not even mention the adventurous time I had at work today. We're not even going to discuss that part, right? Granted, I'm glad that my team actually had a welcome celebration party to welcome me to the team. I felt like I felt so loved. I felt so seen and thankful for that but yo on my way home right i'm on actually i was on my way home i was on my way to check out this play right here this uh playwright by the name of lynn nottage i never heard of her you guys so i was on my way to this event at the um schomburg research center uh in harlem and I'm on the bus, right? And so there's this man, which I believe had to come from the same hospital where I work, right? You guys know I work with psychiatric patients. And I can tell he was a little bit disturbed. You can tell, right? But he wasn't that dysregulated at first. Like he was sitting across from me, right? And I was sitting in the front of the bus. And I noticed he started seeing like he was a bit agitated. He started rocking back and forth, right? I'm like, okay. So it was just the rocking at first, right? Then he started like talking to himself. Now, I don't know if he was responding to internal stimuli or if he was hallucinating. It could have been both, right? You think about it. Hallucinations are kind of like a projection of what a person is experiencing in their internal world, right? So perhaps it was both. Either way, his conversation went like, he was looking at the back of the bus, but it wasn't really nobody back there like to trigger this kind of reaction that <laughs> I was witnessing, right? So he's like yelling at the back of the bus. He was like, yeah, man, coming up in my hood, up on my set. <laughs> just like, we on a bus. <laughs> coming up in your hood, on your what set? We on the bus, right? Sound like some gang gang shit, right? Remind me of dudes out in California. By the way, I used to work at a prison. Most of the population there is comprised of men who were gang members, right? So that's like the language. And so I'm looking like, right? I ain't even look at the back of the bus. I know he wasn't talking to nobody. I'm like, ain't nobody... Ain't no gang members on this goddamn on bus, right? He just talking shit. So he got up, right, as he got triggered by whatever he was seeing, probably hallucinating or experiencing in his mind, he got up and was, like, walking to the back of the bus like he was about to throw a fade, right? Then <laughs> he came back to his seat, sat down. Then he got up and walked to the front of the bus. Now... All I know, because I'm, you know, New Yorkers, we kind of like being our own little world, you know, unless some shit really, really go down. But even if some shit go down, we kind of still be in our own little world, right? So I heard like some commotion. And granted, like I'm sitting at the front front of the bus, right? And he was sitting across from me. He gets, like, as, as he returns back to his seat, he got back up, went to like the front of the bus, right? The entrance, right? And I just hear this commotion. I'm like, what the fuck? Yo, I look up. And I'm thinking that he didn't push off at the, the driver because the driver stopped the, the bus and jumped up, okay? And he kind of opened, he opened his, um, the door to where he was sitting, right? In this little compartment, the driver. And he opens it and then the guy, the irate man, the, the passenger, swings it back, straight, like push it back. But then, like, you can hear, like, this commotion. I'm like, what the fuck? 
Oh, this man had assaulted this elderly Asian woman. And I'm just like, she was on the, the floor of the bus in the front, like trying to protect herself. And I'm just like, how the fuck all this shit happen, yo? This shit happens so fast, yo. It's because you see like people who are out of it in New York all the time. So a lot of times you just really don't think much of it or you really like desensitize to it. You just kinda ignore it, you know, as long as the motherfucker don't come your way, you know. Um and that's what I was kinda thinking the whole time. Like, okay, I can tell that he, you know, he angry, he he appearing to be aggressive and shit is kind of escalating but a lot of times i just ignore him it's like whatever right i didn't know he hadn't went to the front of the bus yo and i guess it was a woman i'm like what was she doing up there anyway because the bus kind of was coming to a, a stop but i don't know if she was i think she was she was getting on the bus but that's i let you know how fast this shit happened all i know is i'm trying to figure out what the hell was happening and i i kind of stood up and I'm looking over and like there's a woman on the fucking ground and then the driver was just like nah man nah then the guy like was pushing the door kicking the door trying, trying to signal for the bus driver to let him off and he got off I'm just like yo the fuck the driver like went to the the elderly woman he's like you okay he like grabbed her face. He's like, "You okay?" And she's like, "I'm okay. I'm okay." <laughs> like, oh my gosh, yo, what the fuck? I think she was at. I think she was Latino though. Um, but she's like, "No, I'm okay. I'm okay." I'm like, "Damn, yo, that's kind of fucked up." This was on my way to this event here that I went to in Harlem. It wasn't an actual play, but it was a talk. Where and it's crazy. It's like New York is filled with all kind of like beauty right but at the same time it's you know it has its ugly moments too but i think the good definitely outweighs the bad that was really unfortunate i'm just like damn you know i hope she's okay but i went to this i went to this event in harlem yo and i found out about it i think like over a week ago because i'm subscribed to the schomburg center's um newsletter right and it's funny because i had got a flyer i got this flyer this was like i think back in the summer this was a month ago when i first saw this oh this is my <laughs> but i um i i i got i think i forget where did i initially see this at though somewhere I'm like oh I gotta check this out and it's funny how things come full circle because what did I see did I go to a festival I think I think it was a, a festival where I picked this up at I remember this was like months ago but anyway it's funny because like I had got tickets and I went to this um talk by um the playwright Lynn Nottage, who wrote this um, play, right? And it was a very heartfelt conversation. Like, I really enjoyed it tonight. So I, I make it a conscious effort to, like, balance out my life, right? My work, given the nature of my work. <laughs> Working in mental health and clinical psychology with, like... And this is not something new. This is what I've been doing for many, many years as I've been in this field, to balance like workout with like leisure activities and play things that um bring me joy right stimulate my dopamine neurotransmitter receptors and you know just make me feel good right so um i think that's really important because you know it's like you work in the field you work with clients who obviously suffer from psychological disorders right and then you look at your colleagues and you see that they're suffering too right? there's this thing called compassion fatigue is really big and that's the reason why self-care is important right it's a whole it's a whole thing big thing 
by the way, it's late, you guys, it's late, it's like, what time is it, after 9 o'clock, so I'm a bit low energy, but, um, the flip side of compassion fatigue is like self-care, and there's a lot of research on it, right, a lot of talk about it, it's a big narrative in the field of healthcare altogether, right, um, but, you know, you see, like, you look at your colleagues, and you're like, dang, you need to take care of yourself, I always make it a conscious effort, like, self comes first. <laughs> That's my motto. Like, I definitely put myself first above anything else. Make sure that you got to eat. I don't understand how people work so hard at work and they don't eat. And I'm looking at my colleagues like, oh, did you eat? <laughs> did you have lunch? I'm like, no, I didn't have lunch. I just had a bagel. Like, are you kidding me? How can you be so immersed in the work that you don't? That's not me, though. I make sure I eat. Um, but anyway, it's interesting that this playwright, Lynn Nottage, um, did I say, I hope I didn't say cottage. I'm gonna, it's pronounced her name. <laughs> Lynn Nottage, but it's like cottage, though. She said that, let me just sit you right here. I got to hang him up. I haven't hung him up yet. But she talked about, like, her struggles because after they, she did, like, the interview, with the host, she um, I did a Q and A where audience members could like ask questions, and it wasn't really a full house. It was like probably twenty percent of the theater was was um, occupied, and so people were asked. Like there was one person that asked her, like, um, you know, questions that bring out the humanity in her artistry, right? get to really see behind the veil and they it was a question posed about um rejection and dealing with that and especially being a, a black you know african american woman um playwright it's difficult it's just like the same struggle that many uh, people experience in the, the film world right whether you're writer your director producer um, is a struggle, and or actors especially, right, black actors, where they talk about the difficulty in getting roles in Hollywood, right? And the role, obviously, being able to get a role as a black male or a female, especially outside of the, the stereotypical um, typecast roles of being a thug or a fucking a hoe or, you know, negative connotation kind of role, is they a lot of black actors talk about the difficulty of that. Um, so you have won yourself to the blacklist, and you will not come off. Oh, dub! How can I block you? Block. Okay, there we go. Um. But, you know, and, and the thing is that they struggle with being able to make it, right? Like, to get certain roles. They get roles, but not at the rate that, I guess, they would deserve, right? Given their talent. Um, so that's why you see a, a big migration of black actors and actresses going to Atlanta because... Who's the big man down there that was giving all the actors and actresses roles? It's Tyler Perry, right? So, she talked about that experience as a playwright. Um, how it's difficult to get her her um, plays like on the screen, right? And she talked about having um, imposter syndrome. I'm like, wow, I've heard that before. As it relates to budding clinicians, psychologists in the field. So, I thought that was interesting. It's a very interesting talk. I know they recorded it. Um, so, it, you probably can find it somewhere on YouTube. You know. Maybe in the months to come. But, very interesting woman. I have to, like, really go back and, like, look more into her. I like her personality. She has locks. And I was the one in the audience that was, ah, ah, woo, 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 when she said that, like, I like when black people are unapologetically African and black, right? They don't, like, try to placate 
or change face just because white people are in the audience, right? And of course, there was a sprinkle of white people in the audience, given Harlem and many other neighborhoods across New York are becoming very gentrified. And that's just not New York, obviously, is, you know, across the United States. Speaking of which, why am I still wearing this coat? Let me come out of this coat, by the way. Yeah, I figured it out. Like, I have really good um, instincts. Very good, strong instincts, right? And this person I just blocked on my um, page. It's funny because I had, that's why I say listen to your instincts, right? Because I always had the instinct that he, this person's just seeking attention. Just attention seeking, right? Because he always come on my post and says hi you know his name from um spain and you know it's always commenting on my beauty and listen it's not about that i can't take a compliment but you have to understand what's motivate what's driving a person right what's beneath that and oftentimes it's just they want attention right because it's like after they get the attention then they you know their needs are met and then they disappear so it's not that this person is watching my videos to really, because they enjoy my videos. They just want the attention. So how do you get, how do men get a woman's attention? Oh, hi, beautiful, right? So I was like, I see through all that bullshit. And so because I didn't acknowledge that this person is being vulgar and saying inappropriate things, right? So yeah, you're going to make it to the block list. But I esteem this, like, it's funny how you like, you want to esteem people high, have respect for them. But they disrespect themselves, right? So, no, you don't have a place here. <laughs> Definitely don't have a place here. Um, but, yeah, so that was really that was really fun, though. I really enjoyed tonight. And I actually wanted to show you guys. This is, like, how many videos in one, right? <laughs> I'm buying all of this in one, but it's just really to just show how like New York is great and it has its moments at the same time. So I was in um, Chelsea neighborhood yesterday and I went to Chelsea Market after I left. I went, I walked back the High Line. I was in actually like the Hudson neighborhood, right? Um, went to, um, walk the High Line, and then I went down to the Hudson Park near the Hudson River, and then I circled back around to go to Chelsea Market, and guess what they have open? The artist part of Chelsea Market! It's like at the tail end of the market, um, right before you exit. On the left-hand side, there's a market, and look what I found, you guys. This African-American woman who makes her own butters, natural, all natural butters. Her company is called IE Spa Indulgences. This is her bag. And so I had to support her, right? Because first of all, I'm big when I'm big on like um like natural products, you know, good for your skin. She also sells candles too. So she had some candles. She had these. She had soaps. Yo, she had so many different, like, variety, right, of the the butters, the body butters. And I'm like, yo, I wish I could get all of them. But I only got one. And this one I got is called African Amber Body Butter. Mm, all of them smell top-line delicious, yo. She says she uses five ingredients. Including, oh, she has her, her ingredients here. Pure African shea butter, mango butter, manoi butter, cocoa butter, and almond butter. Oh, yes, honey. Beneficial oils of organic, unrefined coconut oil, argan oil, and sweet um, almond oil beeswax, aloe vera, vitamin E, yes, all of that jazz, essential oils, and fragrance oils. She's like, you only need a small amount, right? 
So I had like I tested probably about at least seven different fragrances, flavors that she had. But oh my gosh, I deserve this. See, this is part of self care. I do a lot of things for self care. It's not just like because um, that's a big talk, especially in my training. You know, my professors and clinical supervisors will always ask like, "Oh, what do you do for self care?" It's big. It's a big talk. Um, so a lot of a lot of people talk about it in our field. Um, and for me, self care has always been for me like a big part of my life. It's a lifestyle. So sometimes I trip over that question because it's like the things that people have to make out a list and name things for self care. I'm just like that's just my life. <laughs> you know. A, Self-care can manifest itself in many different ways in terms of how you interact with people and relationships, you know, boundaries that you set. You know, it smells so good, y'all. <laughs> you know, it's more than just obviously taking care of yourself on a basic rudimentary level, like washing your ass, brushing your teeth, you know, basic hygiene, ADLs. Um... It's more than that, obviously, what you put in your body, too. But it's also just being mindful of how you allow other people to treat you, right? And the boundaries that you set, not just in, like, personal relationships, but even professional. You know, don't be letting these employers run your life because the thing is is you know and i've always had this mentality if you die you get sick they will replace you right so you gotta put yourself your needs first above anything else and don't be afraid to say no no can be your best friend oh my gosh yes 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 See, I've been stopped, like, shopping at Bath & Body Works. A lot of people shop at Bath & Body Works and Victoria's Secret. And I get it. Those fragrances be smelling the bomb, right? But woke people know you don't use the Bath & Body Works or any kind of scented, like, commercialized um, lotion. And you just don't because it has alcohol in it. And it's not natural, you know. So I've been switched. I may have been made to switch. I don't need that much though, but I I just love it. So I'm gonna put some on my neck, and then I'm gonna close this up, and then I'll be putting this on um, probably every morning before I go and to do my work with my patients. Oh, and you know what? I might just get one for my desk at work and then have one at home. Yes, honey. Especially after I wash my hands at work. You know, your hands get kind of dry. Moisturize. It smells, it smells so good. So this scent, I love it because it's soft, right? Like, she had a... um. Not eucalyptus. What is that scent called? That's definitely invading my uh, memory right now. But it was a very strong scent. I'm like, I love it, but I don't want to get it because it's very strong. I like this scent because it's kind of faint, but you can smell it and mix with my pH, my chemistry. It's perfect, 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 perfect. So I love it, you guys. After I left um, the event I went to tonight, I had to go. You can't go to Harlem without, like, buying things, right? <laughs> so, I definitely got me some food here. I'm about to tear this food up. I had got, yo... This is how I do it, right? Because they just, this concoction is so good. So I got three bottles of this ginger juice here. And when I was um, paying for my food, 
the lady there, the hostess at the restaurant. I mean, all of them are beautiful. Every time I go in there, I just love the energy of this restaurant that I got this food from. I'm going to show you guys in a minute what it is. Um, but it's a Senegalese restaurant, West African. And every, I just love the energy. It's just, I feel so alive there. I'm just like, ah. Um, they are so welcoming, very friendly. And like the lady there, um, that the cashier, right? that I was um, paying for my food with, I couldn't help but acknowledge her beauty. And I'm like, yo, you have beautiful skin, very dark chocolate. Right? I, was like, I said, you have beautiful skin. And she was like, yes, that dark chocolate, that deep, deep chocolate, <laughs> deep. I'm like, yes, girl, that darkness is beautiful, like perfect, just flawless. I said, where are you from? I figured it was Senegal, Sen Senegal, but I wanted to confirm. She was like, yeah, I'm Senegal. Have you ever been? Girl, no, I have never left the U.S., but definitely on my to-do list. Definitely. Oh, I have a definite appetite. That made me some hot wings yesterday. I took those to work. I made them actually last night. And I took them to work. Oh, fucking them jones up. I never eat it with this, but let's see what this tastes like. taste. I don't really need it though. Oh yeah, they got this. It's hot sauce. It's a really spicy sauce. You don't really need that much. Hold on. About to dig in. So much too. I'm gonna put this right here. I give you so much. Ah, this is a whole plate of rice, yo. Rice, onions, veggies. This can be a meal just by itself for those who are vegetarian. But I'm definitely not vegetarian. Definitely a meat eater. Mm. I like the way they package it. Very nice and neat. She asked me, she said, do you want it sliced? So I believe this DB is lamb. These dudes be blowing up my inbox. They don't really know what to say. This is onion right here. Mm, 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 mm. I'm about to suck this up, y'all. I'm about to put it in the microwave. It's seasoned just right. That's why I love it. I had it so good. Let me see some just right. I think it might be grilled. I'm pretty sure it is. Mmm. Remind me of my daddy's steak. That's why I had 
block your motherfucking ass. You can watch, but you damn sure can't comment. The comments are irrelevant and inappropriate. Y'all get my stomach. <laughs> Part of this gas, too. All right, y'all. I'm about to, I'm about to fuck this up. Catch y'all later. I love New York, though. What a way to close out the day. What a nice, delectable plate of DB. I think this is lamb. I call it chicken, but I think it's lamb. I think it's lamb. Yeah, DB lamb. That's what it says on the menu. to go. Put it in the microwave. Catch you guys later. Oh, and I forgot to mention, yo. There's so much shit happening in New York. So, while I'm on my way to... Um, Harlem, right, to the, um, Schomburg Research Center at, to go to my event. This is ginger. So good. I learned that there was a dead body found on the fucking tracks in Upper East Side. And then an hour after that, Someone got struck by the goddamn train. I'm like, yo, I guess New York is back in full swing. This is what it means to be back to normal again for New York. Yo, it's so much shit happening. But that's New York for you. It's so colorful. Um, and I like it because the good does definitely outweigh the bad. So people oftentimes highlight the tragedy the bad, the negative of New York, not paying homage to the beauty of it, right? And that's what my page is for. Like my my YouTube channel, people ask me, oh, what is your YouTube channel about? It's like more of a lifestyle kind of channel, vlog. You know, I talk about, obviously, things that interest me, like topics that interest me. Politics, especially race politics, alternative sexual lifestyles, and things like that. But I also just vlog my life. My life as a clinical psychologist, just my life living in New York. Food, places I, I like to go to. It's lifestyle, right? Um, and you get to see... Uh, you get to see like the good, the beauty of New York. That's what I like to capture. In my vlogs, especially in my photos. I do gotta go, y'all. Catch y'all later. Love you guys. Oh, how was y'all day? I hope it was just as fantastic as mine, yo. Eventful, shall I say. Fantastic ain't even the right word. Very eventful. But I'll catch y'all later.